I, uh, I have to ask, uh, Dr. King, what's the story with the clock there? The clock is marked at every 12 minutes. That's how often a woman will die of breast cancer in this country. Well, you believe that there may be a genetic link to some breast cancers? I do. Even though virtually no one else believes this to be true? That's correct. Okay, so you just saw a clip from the movie Decoding Annie Parker. And if you haven't seen it, then why is it so important? Why are we showing it to you again? Dr. Mike Janicek is here. He is a gynecological oncologist at Arizona Oncology and medical director of genetic risk assessment at both Arizona Oncology and the Virginia G. Piper Cancer Center. So this movie, why is it so important? And why should so many women and daughters see it? Well, it's the 20th anniversary of the discovery of the BRCA gene, and there isn't a week in my office where someone doesn't walk in with some tragedy because they missed an opportunity to identify that they're at risk for breast or ovarian cancer. And so this movie is a story about how the BRCA gene was discovered. It was discovered in 1994, and it's actually a great movie. I've seen the screening, but the message is not just about mothers and daughters. It's about fathers and sons and brothers and husbands. The BRCA gene is not sex-linked. So it's very important to get the message out that this affects all families and I think the way I look at this is you should ask the question if you have a cancer in your family is it just bad luck or is it genetic or if you have a cancer in yourself is it just bad luck or is it genetic and we have the capabilities and technology to test for that and get an answer well and you cite so many times take a look around the table at Thanksgiving and find out what's going on with each person. And I mentioned the mothers and daughters because so many times you think of when it comes to the breast cancer, hence now the, the genetic testing, which is also relating to some of the ovarian and some other things that it's not just from the, the mom's side. Look at the father's side too. And exactly. this can affect your sons as well. Well, take the BRCA2 gene for instance. In men, it has a nine times higher risk of a deadlier prostate cancer. So if Angelina Jolie has a brother, he might want to worry if he has the genetic mutation. So our society has been focused on breasts and the breast and ovarian, but it's also prostate and pancreatic. Plus there's other cancer syndromes involved in colon and other cancers. So I think we need to take a broader look. This movie is great. It's focusing on the breast and doesn't really mention the ovarian that much, as, though it should. I think all of us should ask ourselves the question, cancer affects all of us, either personally or in our families. The question is, is it just bad luck or is it genetic? And we have the capabilities now of testing our genetic codes. We have 20,000 genes in our bodies, maybe five, 600 are related to cancer. We can now test our genes to see if there's a misspelling or error in it. The tests are becoming more broadly available. There's more genes they're testing for. They're coming down in price. Uh, last year, the Supreme Court struck down the patent for Myriad Genetics on the BRCA1 gene, the BRCA1 and 2 genes. And that opened the floodgates for many companies to offer their own testing. The prices have come way down. Um, even for those people that have had testing years ago, it may be out of date already. There's fourth generations of tests available. It's like software. You need to upgrade it. Mm -hmm. So these are all important questions to ask. And I get back to the same point. If you have cancer, if someone in your family has cancer, even if it's just one person, for instance, if you're breast cancer at age 45 or less, you need to have the genetic test. All and every ovarian cancer patient. Now they're screening all colon cancers for Lynch syndrome, all endometrial cancer. So more and more guidelines are calling for greater and broader testing, and it's hard for the medical profession to keep up on all these developments. I encourage patients and people affected with cancer or their loved ones, ask the question, is it bad luck or is it genetics? And get a healthcare provider to help answer that question. And two key points that you brought up too is, once you realize, okay, maybe it is genetics, the cost, which is going down because that's always a concern for everybody, is it, it, the, how expensive it is. If, it is it, if it's covered by insurance, which so, it, sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. How it does mostly that is now. And one of the few good things that came out of Obamacare is that people that are at risk that had insurance that started after March of 2010, genetic testing is covered. Medicare covers testing for most patients. So uh, you know, across the board, almost all genetic tests are covered. But the prices are coming down enough where even if it's not covered by insurance, it, if it may save your life or a loved one's, it's worth it. Why would you not do it. it? Okay, case in point. The viewers know I'm a breast cancer survivor. My mother is a breast cancer survivor. I have a daughter, I've got two sons, and I have a sister. I did the genetic testing, but I did it back in 2010. So because all of these new guidelines and these new findings, would you suggest that I be tested again? 
I think you should consider it. You should look at your pedigree, sit down with your health care provider and ask the question. And most likely you probably would qualify for an upgraded test. And plus it's not just the upgraded test, it's 20 plus other genes that are now discovered that are linked to breast and other cancers. It's not all just about BRCA anymore. Mm -hmm. How the, the correlation between the breast and ovarian, you mentioned Angelina Jolie. Ang Angelina Jolie's mother died of ovarian cancer and her mother died of ovarian cancer, correct? And her great-grandmother. Great -grandmother. Okay, so, hello. But yet she chooses to get rid of her breasts versus Well, she the also ovaries. chose to get rid of the ovaries. That came out a week later and the media didn't focus on that because the media likes to focus on, no offense to the media, mm -hmm. our society is fixated on breasts. Mm -hmm. uh, the ovarian cancer is far more deadly and you can't screen for it. So my job as a G1 oncologist, self-serving of course for my patients, but to get the message out that for the BRCA story, ovarian cancer is important as well. And like you said, we've been focusing on the women here, but for the men too, it's so important to have the men tested. And what takes place with this test? What do you need to do? Is you it a blood spit test? in a tube or a blood test. It's that simple. It okay. used to cost around four or $5,000. Ambry Genetics just sent me an email yesterday saying their prices have come down to $1,500 for a large panel, $1,200 for the BRCA gene. So the, it's still very expensive, but when you consider what it can do oh, yeah. for yourself or your loved ones, and once you find one mutation in the family, testing the others is only about four or five hundred dollars. And again, I, you know, you can I can walk through someone's house and pick out things that are more expensive. That you can't tell me that the your genetic life. testing isn't worth it. You just can't tell me. There are resources, there are insurance, there's so many ways. But I think money is no longer an excuse not to get this done if you qualify if you're at risk, if you're eligible. And again, the screening is taking place next Thursday evening. It's at the AMC Desert Ridge at 7.30. You can go to facebook.com front slash Arizona Oncology to purchase your tickets. We will have a panel discussion afterwards and I will be there as well with Dr. Mike Janicek. Terrific information. Thank you. And we look forward to seeing all of you there. We'll be right back with more than one scramble.